instantly. Well, my next guest takes us into the heritage of Fuji music. You know, in history of Nigerian music, Fuji music basically stands out as one of the most popular traditional genres that has transcended its borders. You know, its influence is so profound that the history of music in Nigeria will not be complete without it. Now, Bobo Omotayo is a Fuji lover who is passionate about preserving the history and rich heritage of the genre. He is a culture custodian and he created Fuji uh, Opera. Take a look at the trailer for that. Come on, you. Come on, you. I need your Fuji And now let's head into our Lagos studio, Bobo, the culture custodian. It's great to have you on Arise 360. Good to uh, be here with you, Kachi. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. So first of all, let's talk about your passion for Fuji music. Walk me through why it's so important to continue to tell the story of Fuji music as you've dedicated your time, your resources and your energy to do it. I mean, to be honest, I don't I mean, I don't particularly think it's about singing it out uh, Fuji music. I think for me, it's important that we are uh, very passionate about indigenous music genres. Um, and there are many. I mean, there is High Life, there is Ajiwere Ajisari, there is Juju, and of course there's Fuji. Uh, my passion for the genre has been since I was seven years old. Um, but I mean, it sort of rekindled um, during the pandemic, where I had a lot of time on my hands, as we all did, and I was listening to a lot of the genre. And I think the more I listened, the more I became fascinated about the history of the genre. The, the genre has a very complex uh, genre um, history. But I think for me, one of the things that I learned was, you know, you can't tell the story of Fuji music without telling the story of Nigeria. And the more that I read about Fuji music, I sort of learned more about, you know, what it is uh, to be Nigerian, uh, Nigerian's history, particularly um, post-independence. And the more I learned, the more I wanted to share with the world. And you know, we started this thing called Fujia Opera in 2020. We started with an exhibition at um, the Allian Francais in, in Lagos here. And you know, since then, it's just gotten bigger and bigger. Uh, we do an annual concert in Lagos that sort of caters to about 5,000 people. And last year, and I, I, I saw that you played the trailer, last year we, we had our UK debut um, at the Africa Center in London. Uh, which was attended by you know tw twenty thousand people from all different walks of life. I mean, I, I saw Australians, you know, I saw you know people from Bulgaria, um, as well as of course Nigerians and Ghanaians. So for me, you know, the, the genre has transcended culture, um, it's transcended generations, and I think it's important that we continue to celebrate it. Yes. Now, for the back end of music, because the front end would be the, the musicians, uh, the people who actually create the music, the producers, the songwriters. But then you look at the back end, the A&R, the distributors. Do you think <clears throat> that we are doing enough to really tell the rest of the world that there's more to us as Nigerians than Afrobeat? Well, I mean, to be honest, for me, um, we all need to start with something. Um, you know, when I think about what it was to be a black man growing up in the United Kingdom about 20 years ago, there was only one reputation that Nigerians had, and that was 419 and fraud. And that was sort of like a reputation that sort of just stuck to every Nigerian, no matter if you were in England or you are in America. And, you know, I think it really limited what it is that, you know, professionals in particular could do. Um, but, you know, I think if we think about the success of Afrobeats and the incredible numbers that the streaming platforms are doing, you know, increasingly Nigerian culture is becoming what globally we are known for. 
So I think for me, that can only be a win-win. Uh, my advocacy really is that there's so much more to Afrobeats. And more importantly, I need everyone to understand that Afrobeats is a sum total of many, many genres. If you listen to an average Afrobeat song, there's influences of Juju in it. There's influences of High Life in it. There's influences of Fela who created Afrobeat. And of course, there are influences of Fuji. So for me, I mean, it's great that we're enjoying this great success, but I definitely want people to look back and celebrate all of those unsung heroes, you know? Um, but, you know, to speak um, about, you know, if we're doing enough, um, particularly with the record labels, I think we've come a long way. Because if you think about how music was distributed, you know, in the 50s and 60s, you know, they were essentially just bootleggers and they were literally selling music from their cars and they were just printing presses across, you know, different parts of Lagos, Ibadan, um, Enugu and so on and so forth. But if you think about the sophistication with technology, it's amazing what that's been able to do. And I think that can only be a, a, a good thing, you know. I like that you put it that way. So we are in a very good space. Earlier on the show, I spoke about Burner Boy and <clears throat> how he was amongst the time 100 most influential people. I do think that when giving the right platform, the right space to show our gifts, um, Nigerians can do incredible things. Now, with regards to the artists within the genre that is Fuji, What's your assessment of that? Um, do we have, like you rightly said, there's a lot of Fuji within Afrobeat. There's a lot of infusion of different sounds within Afrobeat. But then sticking to it now as a genre on its own, when you think about what Pasuma Wanda sounded like or what Ibis or Obisiri sounded like, you know, the specific nature of their music, the pace, the, you know, Fuji music is good, good, you know, it has a sound. It's, it's, it has its own sound that you cannot just take away from it. Looking at the time we are in now, yeah. do we have more I mean, people? Look. Do we have more people, you know, doing that? Or is everyone just doing the infusion? I mean, to be honest, you know, I think if you think about how, you know, a lot of our indigenous genres grew, they grew from instruments that were made locally. So for example, in Fuji music, you have Agidigbo, which is essentially an instrument that was made in Lagos Island, right? You got Shekere, you know, you have the Babailu, you have all of these, you know, instruments that are truly, truly indigenous, and they are created here. So a lot of the artists who came up around the 50s and the 60s, they were experimenting with a lot of music. Of course, they had international music influences, right? So, you know, I've heard that, you know, James Brown, for example, and the way he played funk music had influenced a lot of Nigerian musicians. But the truth was, a lot of the influences that they got were, you know, truly, truly Nigerian. And I think for me, you know, all I need Afrobeats to do is give respect where respect is due. And I think it's important, you know, that a lot of the producers who are experimenting with sound, you know, they're doing a lot of sampling. I have no problem in sampling. It's a way in which a, a genre can continue to exist, but it's important that they continue to give respect where respect is due by giving credit, by giving royalties, and so on and so forth. And we are really passionate about you know, telling this story. So for example, we are currently producing a documentary called The Odyssey. And The Odyssey is essentially you know, telling the story of the last 100 years of Yoruba music through its evolution from 1930s Lagos Island, 1930s Ibadan, how the music has evolved to Ajiwere Ajisari, to Asiko, to Awurebe, to Were, to Waka, and you know, of course to Fuji. And more importantly, how the, the seismic shifted, right? Because in the early 80s, Fuji music was contemporary pop music. So all of this success that all the Burner Boys and Whiskids and Davidos are enjoying now, it was the Fuji artist, it was the Sikura Inde Barista, it was the Angela Colinton, it was the Salawa Beni who dominated the 80s. So I think for me, you know, it can only be a positive thing if we, you know, sort of take a step back, have a look as to where we're going, sorry, where we're coming from, in order for us to think about where we're going. I, I, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself, 1000%. And thank you also for looking at it from that perspective, because based on what you've said now, it sounds more like we're all just, it, it's, it's all in, how do I put it? It's like there's a melting pot here. And all these different sounds are just going in there to just create what is known as a strong foundation for Nigerian music. You know, so at the end of the day, it's more like we're all just pulling each other up 
correct and as opposed to just, you know, pulling each but, other apart. But Kachi, it's a good point, Kachi, but I need us to all think about if you think about the things that you like most in life, right, yeah. it's always nostalgic, right? Yes. And a lot of this, you know, music that we're sampling from, it takes us back to a particular time in our childhood, sure. right? So, you know, a lot of the people who are sampling these other genres, it's really about nostalgia. It's about thinking about what their parents played in their houses, especially people who came from places where, homes where music was played a lot. You know, a lot of them are referencing Sonia Day. They're referencing Ebenezer Obey because these were the music that their parents played and of course had a bit of a, um, a, a, an impact on them and of course it's going to affect um, your creativity I mean hopefully in a positive way. Hopefully in a positive way. Bobo Omotayo thank you so much for you know just giving us as much as a deep dive as possible into this and I am actually looking forward to the Odyssey. Do you have a release date possibly for this? Thank you. Um, so the plan is it's going to be released in 2025, uh, but we're going to do a festival route initially. So we're entering a lot of um, international film festivals. And, you know, once we've done that international film festival circuit, we would, you know, premiere it on one of the mainstream platforms. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you out there. You know, uh, that's actually a story that cannot be told enough. Bobo Omotayo on our ice 360. Thank you for joining me on the show.